run the engine room of the weed hatch and we've got a problem. I've uh, been in the weed hatch today to get the plastic bags etc from around the prop. Screwing this plate back down and this weld has become detached and it should look like that. I have to say that the uh, metal on it's a bit thin, a bit flimsy. So um, it's screwed down as best as and um, oh I've got to get out of here, hang on. It's hot down there. So uh, we've done a call round of all the local boat yards and uh, Fran's at the CRT office at the moment seeing if they can help us, they're ringing round people that uh, might be able to help us. And we found a boat yard uh, about seven miles up the canal. So it looks like that's going to be our only option, nothing else has come up. So uh, we're just going to have to take it easy, pootle along without uh, going too fast and hope it's going to hold. Um, worst thing in the world for boaters is water coming in the boat obviously and uh, it's a continuing fear. Uh, of narrow boating or any boating I should imagine so we'll keep you posted with what's going on for about half an hour now on our way out of Birmingham with a broken boat and uh, Rich seems to be taking it all in his stride I'm a bit more nervous about it but we're popping uh, below every five minutes or so just to check you've clamped it up haven't you and there's no sign of any water coming in but we've got about another five miles six miles to go so it's seems to be alright, we're just going along slowly, carefully. Yeah, it's just Sud's law, it's just over tightening I suppose, just to try and be on the safe side and uh, probably just done it too much. You know, but the thing is, the, the actual fitting itself is only a quarter of an inch steel, isn't it? And the well done, it looks really tiny, for want it's of a more technical <laughs> expression. It's the one thing on your boat that you really worry about, isn't yeah. it? Because anything else breaks down, okay, you might be stuck in the middle of a canal, not able to move, and somebody will have to tow you aside. But if your weed hatch fails, I think we've all seen pictures of boats that takes 30 seconds for them to sink. <laughs> we've just painted. <laughs> yeah. Don't want that to happen. So, anyway, we're enjoying the cruise still, aren't we? And yeah. We just Nice. We've just really decided we needed to be out of Birmingham. You know what we're like once we have had enough of a town. We just need to go, yeah. don't we? I don't think we've explained what we've done since we left uh, Wooden Wowing, have we? From the wedding. So we've come back up the Stratford Canal, uh, and then into Birmingham. And we've been here for two nights. We've had uh, another little touristy trip round Brum and we really enjoyed ourselves didn't we? We've, we saw such a change in three four weeks that we were away on the way through there was one area that was just a building site and on the way back it had been turned into the most fantastic paddling area for children with fountains on it um, there'll be some pictures footage on there in just three four weeks such a change We've got to make sure we go the right way now. Yeah, hang on a sec. We've just got we're, to steer clear of this junction, keep going, haven't we've we? We've yeah. got two routes ahead of us. One involves going up three locks and then down three locks to get to the same area, or we can just go on the flat. And obviously, with the problems, we just want to go on the flat. So make sure we get the right way. Hopefully, I'll be able to see the locks through this arm that we're going to avoid. But look at these wild flowers growing along the side of the canal. Absolutely beautiful. You couldn't plant something like that. 
and make it look as nice. Why aren't all roundabouts like that? Anyway, it says there, look, Spon Lane Junction. So I think that's the bit with all the locks up and down that we don't need to be doing. So the plan is today is to get to Wolverhampton. It's 10 and a quarter miles from here. So hopefully they can get the welding done in pretty short time, quick time rather, and uh, we'll be back on our way. Watch this space. Just by the Oozle, Oozle Street loop. 
Um, he laughs at the way I say Oozle. Oozle Street Loop. <laughs> but um, all there was was a little bit of noise from the cricket at the bars and nothing, nothing to worry about at all. But having said that, if you've only got two days and you want to spend somewhere in the UK, I'll go to York or Bath. Oh, well, I've not been yet. Like that, so, yeah. Not to York, Bath. I don't know, Birmingham, Bath. I'd do Birmingham rather than Bath. York, really? I'll, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you my verdict on um, York when we've been there. Anyway, out for now. Coming out of Birmingham, the way we've come, there are two canals that run absolutely parallel to each other. The one that we're on and an original canal which is just up on this bank. Which is the canal we came in on. We were wondering why these two canals run side by side. The higher one has three locks going up at each end so you end up doing six locks and we've just uh, read that that was the original canal that Brindley built um, but boats had to go up the three locks and then down at the other end. And then some years later, Telford built this new quicker canal in this cutting. But they had to dig out, as you can see, all this ground either side and Four, up here. 40 foot deep it is. And I guess the technology wasn't there originally, or the, you know, the mechanics and engineering to do that. But it cut a huge amount of time off of the journeys of the boats into uh, Birmingham. There's a railway line up this side, the original canal at the top there, and some way behind us, there was a beautiful building which was a pumping station which pumped water from the lower level up to the higher level um, once both the canals were built. So a little bit of Birmingham history for you. And no, I'm not reading it from a book, I've learnt it from a book. <laughs> Here ended today's lesson. Yes, I think we're going to come to a stop. This is how slowly we are going. What do you say, Jess? We need to get down and take the weed hatch cover off, but I don't take it off in case I can't get it back on properly again. We're just going to have to maybe pull it with the ropes. It's just so choked. The boatyard is just at that bridge ahead. We've been going for about three hours. But the canal now is full of this stringy, hairy weed. The bottom's full of it, it's everywhere, just packed of it. And we're trailing it. Trailing it behind the prop shaft, or behind the propeller. But we're reluctant to go into uh, reverse. Normally we just have a few seconds blast in reverse gear to shift it, but we've had a couple of little tentative tries. So I think we're going at about a mile an hour, if that now. So never been so slow. <laughs> but as I say, the boatyard is just, if you can see it, just at that bridge. If needs be, we'll just get out and tow it there. Um, let's hope they can sort us out. Well we were stranded in the middle of the canal, the boat was standing still, we couldn't move because of the weed and the rubbish. So I had to uh, abandon and get down, take the weed cover off, the weed hatch cover off and the rubbish we brought out and the weed that was around there is awful. It's taken us an hour <laughs> at least to do half a mile and we are now at higher revs than we would normally go just inching along fortunately the boatyard who's going to help us is just at that bridge so I guess that might take another half an hour to get there <laughs> you did start punting it at one point I was trying you? to punt it but the, the worrying thing is if that hatch cover fails and we sink 
the whole boat's going to sink because it is so deep here. I've got the pole in the ground and it's at least six, seven foot deep in places. And I'd hate to fall in as well because you just get yourself tangled up in all this weed. It just, I can't imagine that boats ever get down here without out getting blocked up. It well, is so bad. And the thing is, it's one of the main arteries into Birmingham. And it's so no wonder we haven't seen, we've seen one boat today, we've passed one boat and uh, that's all. And it's the height of summer and if they want more and more boats to go into Birmingham to spend their money, they're going to have to do something better than this. This is terrible. I mean, it is, there's a little bit of plastic as well. well there was plastic around the prop, wasn't there? Yeah. But it's, the, I think the main problem is the weed, really. It's just choking everything up. Uh, oh hum. And we're only sort of halfway through our planned day's journey at the moment, yeah. aren't we? Whether or not we're going to make the rest of it or we're going to stop off short. We'll see how long it takes them at the boatyard. Hopefully they are able to get on with this and help us quite quickly, but who knows. Alright, we'll keep you in touch with what goes on. Finally in Wolverhampton. It is it is now 8:30 in the evening. We left Birmingham at 10:30 this morning. Yep. So that's 10 hours. Take away an hour and a half for the guy to weld the bracket on the weed hatch for us. So it's taken eight and a half hours to do 11 or 12 miles, <laughs> and we're knackered the slowest we've ever gone. The weed in the main line from Birmingham to Tipton is just unbelievable. We have emptied so many buckets of plastic and weed. The weed we've just thrown on the side of the canal, the plastic we've got in a bucket over here. And I still need to get into the weed hatch again because we've crawled through the tunnel here into Wolverhampton. But it's not um, native weed is it? It's stuff it would appear that it's stuff that people will maybe have put out with chucked out goldfish from goldfish tanks or something and it's just completely clogged up the canal and it doesn't help with the fact that um, not wanting to grumble about CRT really, but they've been along strimming the towpath for long stretches of canal where there is n absolutely no way you can moor there because it's concrete edges and no rings, but they've still strimmed and all the strimmings have gone into the canal as well, I they? just don't understand why they're spending their energy strimming long stretches of canal where nobody wants to moor. It's in in different areas of a city where nobody wants to be anyway and they stream miles upon miles of canal where they could be just leaving it for wildflowers which I will show. Well I'm so frustrated, I'm so tired, I just can't speak <laughs> I have to say. But we're here we, and there's mooring spaces, we've looked through into Birmingham, there is a space to moor nicely but we've just stopped 
here to fill up with water so that in the morning we haven't got to worry about anything really we've got what we needed so we're gonna go through that bridge there and just moor the other side and uh... plus <clears throat> For the first, I know it sounds like this is a really negative, moany bit of vlog, which we don't normally do, but the first time ever we've been catapulted today yeah. as well. Fortunately, well, I don't know about it, fortunately, could because the, the GoPro camera wasn't actually charged up, but we pointed it at the culprits who were just young teenage boys. And once they realised they were being filmed, they stopped. Covered their faces um, like this. <laughs> but we sort of caught them before they actually hit the boat. We saw them throwing stuff into the canal and then Rich saw them loading catapults. And once they thought they were being filmed, nothing happened. Yeah. But it's the first negative thing that we've had like that happen to us, isn't it really? Which is a shame. So this is the other side of Narrowboat Life. Mm not seen before to be honest and I'm fed up I've had enough I want me dinner which isn't even started yet <laughs> I'm gonna go start cooking now I want another glass of wine and uh, I want me bed <laughs> in what order <laughs> <laughs> I'll let go and get cooking